So I'm an aquatic biologist. That means that I study things living in the water. I spend a lot of time on riverbanks like this one, tracking fish movement. Why? Because knowing where fish move and why can help us conserve and protect them. Biologists track many types of animals to learn more about what they do and where they live. Some animals in North America, for example, birds and butterflies, travel south in the winter to leave the extreme cold. Others, like the caribou, migrate seasonally between rich feeding grounds and protected areas to raise their young. Some fish, like salmon, leave their home rivers soon after hatching, swim thousands of kilometers out to the open ocean, and then return to the very place they were born to reproduce. Tracking animals using tags goes all the way back to 1803, when American naturalist John James Audubon first tied a ribbon to a bird's leg and noticed that that same bird came back the next year. That early form of tracking, which is now called banding for birds and tagging for fish, is widely used in today's research. So, for example, a fish is caught and a special ID tag is attached. The fish is then released back into the wild unharmed. If that fish is recaptured in the future, the time and place of its release and recapture can be compared. This type of research is called mark recapture. When many fish, birds, or other animals are tagged in this way, it gives us an idea of where these animals live and travel. What mark recapture tagging cannot tell us is what happens between releasing recapture. Like where exactly did the fish go? And what did it do? So how can we find out? New technology has provided a brilliant answer, biotelemetry. Biologists are now able to attach small transmitters to animals. These send out unique identification codes that allow the biologist to track the movement of individual animals over a period of months or even years. There are three main ways of doing this. A radio transmitter implanted in a fish can send ID codes to antennas located above water at fixed points along a riverbank, or to a mobile antenna operated by a researcher on foot or in a boat. These transmitters don't have a lot of power, so the fish needs to be close to the antenna to be detected. Radio telemetry works very well in freshwater, but radio signals can't pass through saltwater well enough to be detected by an antenna. If researchers want to track fish without having to be there, they can use a newer technology called acoustic telemetry. Implanted transmitters send out a sound that can be detected by a type of microphone called a hydrophone a recording device that is placed underwater. Similar to radio telemetry, fish implanted with acoustic transmitters must be close enough to the hydrophone for it to record the sound. This distance can be anywhere between 50 meters and 4 kilometers, depending on the size of the transmitter and the water conditions. Transmitting data using sound allows biologists to collect information not only on where the fish is, but also the temperature of the water, and how deep the fish is swimming. Because of these amazing advances in technology, acoustic telemetry is now widely used in both fresh and salt water. The third approach is satellite telemetry. It is used to track larger animals such as whales, sharks, or turtles that are able to carry larger transmitters. These transmitters require the animal to come to the surface of the water so that the signal can be detected by satellites. Biologists can download the information from satellites and know where an animal is in the world, even if the animal is thousands of kilometers away. Other satellite transmitters gather and store data over a period of time. The tags are programmed to detach from the animal and float to the water surface. Once at the surface, the signals are detected and data is sent to satellites. Transmitters are implanted in different ways depending on the size of the fish and the type of the tag. So this one, which is about three and a half centimeters long and a centimeter and a half wide, is designed to be placed inside of a fish's body. Most transmitters are surgically implanted. To do this, a fish is captured and held under control using either medication or mild electricity. 
It is then placed in a partially submerged cradle. In this case, the scientist makes a small cut in the fish's belly, puts in the transmitter, and closes the cut using stitches. A small marker printed with a unique identification number and the researcher's contact details is attached to the fish's back. And measurements are taken. The fish is placed in a holding tank to make sure it's okay. After a few minutes, it's released back into the wild. So once a transmitter is in place and the fish is out in the wild, what can we learn? The answer is a lot. In addition to the fish's location, some of these transmitters can show the fish's acceleration and heart rate. We can learn how deep it dives and the temperature of its surroundings. If a fish ladder is built to help fish get over a hydroelectric dam, Tracking tagged fish will tell us if they are making the trek successfully. Information gathered from the same fish over months or years can tell us how its environment and behavior may be changing. Telemetry data can help us make better fish management decisions, learn more about species we don't know much about, or track invasive species to better understand how they spread and how other species may invade our ecosystems in the future. Tracking allows us to follow fish throughout all seasons, including under the ice where they are harder to see and capture. If we know which areas are important to endangered species, we can act to protect them, perhaps by creating areas where human activities that may further endanger them are prohibited. Biotelemetry is constantly improving. In the years ahead, there will be many more opportunities to use this remarkable technology to learn much more about species that inhabit the underwater world. Students in classrooms across Canada can now see what these aquatic biologists are seeing. Aquatrax is a free, bilingual, curriculum-based resource for teachers, making tracking data freely available for use in learning activities. Bringing real-world data into the classroom helps students explore what's happening in nature right now introduces conservation issues that face us all, and inspires students to become tomorrow's scientists, technologists, engineers, and mathematicians. If you are a teacher interested in bringing Aquatrax into your classroom, or a researcher who would like your data to be used in Aquatrax lesson plans, please visit aquatrax.ca to learn how.